Hello, it's great to be back. And thanks to Jerry Agar for doing such a great job on the show while I was away. My wife and I had a little baby, and that's a handful. My job is diaper duty, or VP diapers, as I'm putting it on my resume. But I don't mind. Look, for 20 years, I've been fighting against political correctness and government abuse of power. So dealing with crap is sort of my specialty. Anyways, nice to see you again. There's a lot that's been going on. The last two fascinating presidential debates and the enormous swing in the polls away from Barack Obama. The unraveling of Obama's cover-up of what really happened in Benghazi, Libya, when al-Qaeda terrorists stormed the U.S. consulate. Uh, the Premier of Ontario, Dalton McGuinty, resigning in a final blast of scandal, his work done, having turned Ontario into a have-not province for the first time in history. But hey, he's built 300-foot-high wind turbines that produce extremely expensive electricity, if it's windy, so there's that. And of course, I missed the most pressing news item of all, which is the staffing of Justin Trudeau's campaign team. This is important. If he is successful, the people he's choosing now for his inner circle could become cabinet ministers. Gerald Butts, the CEO of a foreign-funded environmental extremist group called the World Wildlife Fund, is now a full-time Trudeau campaign strategist. So we know what Trudeau's approach to the oil sands will be. But an even more important senior position has yet to be filled. The person who will spend more time with the candidate than any policy advisor. I'm talking about his personal stylist and hair products and moisturizer wrangler. Keep an eye out for that key appointment. All of these stories have been well covered in the sun during my absence. But I want to talk about something of particular interest to me that happened in the background in a courtroom in Calgary while I was away. As you may recall, last year when Alison Redford was a long-shot candidate running to be the leader of the PC Party of Alberta, she came on my TV show, as all the other candidates did too. Now, I asked her about two of my favorite subjects, ethical oil and freedom of speech. Now, she gave a boilerplate answer on ethical oil, and to her credit, she has exceeded my low expectations in defending the oil sands against the bizarre extortion attempts by Christy Clark, the desperate premier of BC. Anyways, but the more important answer, the more interesting answer, I think, and the one that actually caused me to endorse her for the leadership of the PCs was when I asked her about freedom of speech. Now, as you know, six and a half years ago, I was charged by the Alberta Human Rights Commission for hate speech for publishing the Danish cartoons of Mohammed in the Western Standard magazine that I ran. I was prosecuted under Section 3 of that Orwellian law, which says it's illegal to publish anything, quote, likely to expose a person to hatred or contempt. In other words, it's against the law to do something that maybe will hurt someone's feelings in the future. Well, after 900 days, the government dropped the charges against me, but I haven't dropped my charges against them. They're still a bunch of bullies. And so last year, I asked the woman who would be premier what she was going to do about that law. And here's what she said. Would you amend the law to remove Section 3? I think that's the section. Would you specifically take that power away from the Human Rights Commission? I've, I have said before that I would, and I believe that it's important for us to ensure that free speech is protected, and I don't believe that the arguments that we hear uh, that the criminal code is sufficient uh, protection uh, is, is, uh, is an accurate assessment. I have to tell you, I was surprised that she gave the strongest answer of all the candidates, especially given how liberal she is on other things. But maybe that's the point. True liberals believe in freedom of speech. I mean, that's what the word liberal means in Latin, free. It's even part of Alberta's motto, fortis et liber, which means strong and free in Latin. It's a phrase taken from our national anthem. And lest you think that that was just her sucking up to me on this conservative TV show, well, she also said the same thing in writing to the left-leaning Rocky Mountain Civil Liberties Association. You can see it right there on their survey. Quote, freedom of expression must be shielded and Section 3 of the Alberta Human Rights Act should be repealed. That's what she said. Okay, great. But she hasn't done it. She's been premier for more than a year, and she has not repealed Section 3, the easiest amendment possible. We know that because the federal government, God bless them in this rare instance, just did the same thing. The House of Commons passed Brian Storseth's private member's bill, Bill C-304, to repeal the federal equivalent of this censorship law. But Redford didn't do it. Well, here's my good news, and I think it's big news, even though I think it's been underreported in the consensus media. The Alberta Court of Appeal, that's the highest court in Alberta, denounced Section 3, the censorship provision of the Human Rights Act, in the boldest language imaginable. In a unanimous three-judge verdict, 
not only did the Court of Appeal confirm that the Alberta Human Rights Commission was wrong when it censored a Christian pastor for criticizing gay marriage, but the judges went far beyond that. They went through the law sentence by sentence and showed that it just didn't make any sense. The censorship law is incoherent, so vague and contradictory, it's junk legislation. The law is incomprehensible, which is exactly why, until 2009, the, these hate speech laws had a 100% conviction rate. It's a 31-page judgment by the Alberta Court of Appeal, but let me read just one part of it to you, just to show you what a joke this law, Section 3, the censorship provision, is. See, Section 3.1 of the Alberta Human Rights Act says that it's illegal to make any, quote, statement, publication, notice, sign, symbol, emblem, or other representation that is likely to expose a person to hatred or contempt. It's pretty clear. You can't hurt people's feelings in Alberta. But look at Section 3.2 of the same law. Quote, nothing in this section shall be deemed to interfere with the free expression of opinion on any subject. Huh? So you can't hurt someone's feelings, that's illegal, but the same law, literally the same section, 3-2, deems, officially, declares, hey, no worries, we'll say this doesn't interfere with your freedom of expression of an opinion. Well, if you think that's a contradiction, you're not alone. And then here's this little thing called section two of our Constitution, the Charter of Rights, which says, and I quote, everyone has the following fundamental freedoms, A, freedom of conscience and religion, and B, Freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including freedom in the press and other media of communication. So, yeah, how do you justify a censorship law that not only violates the charter, but also violates its own internal pretend protection for free speech? Now, here's how Justice Clifton O'Brien put it in his ruling the other day from the Court of Appeal. He wrote on behalf of all three Court of Appeal judges. He said, quote, of particular concern in the area of human rights law is that a lack of clarity will cast a chill on the exercise of the fundamental freedoms, such as freedom of expression and religion. And here's what else he said. He said, this lack of clarity has resulted in this protracted litigation to the detriment and expense of all parties. Huh, for sure. And then about that internal contradiction I just mentioned, here's what the, ju the judge said. Quote, if the legislature thinks it appropriate to regulate speech in this area, then it is incumbent upon it to do so in a clear fashion. And finally, the citizens of this province are entitled to certainty when it comes to exercise of their fundamental rights. You know, judges are usually pretty buttoned down people. And the Court of Appeal is a pretty sober place for three judges of the highest court of the province to rip this censorship law to shreds, condemn the legislature for incoherence, demolish the submissions of the Alberta government lawyer trying to defend this law. It's pretty amazing, let alone the actual decision it had here confirming that a Christian pastor has the right to send a letter to the editor, whether or not some professional complainer says he's offended by it. This court decision is a thunderclap. It's surely the most devastating critique of any law issued by the court this year. It was, it was amazing. Now, the House of Commons has already voted to repeal the federal version of this censorship law. Alison Redford promised a year ago she'd do so too. You saw the clip a minute ago. For some reason, she turned her back on civil liberties. But Alberta's highest court hasn't, thank God. You know what? Redford should keep her promise. If the federal example is anything to go by, no one will criticize Redford for, for repealing censorship other than some professional hucksters and permanent whiners who can no longer bully people they disagree with. And hey, she can always say, a judge made her do it.